In this presentation, we will continue on entering data into our comprehensive problem for an individual taxpayer into tax software for a lower income taxpayer, now entering the dependents with into tax software. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in our test 1040. We have the single individual, Adam Smith. We have the social security number and information filled out. No dependents at this time. Within page two, we can see that there is currently W-2 income. We have the W-2 income of the 20,800. Standard deduction, 12,000. We have then the taxable income, 8,800. Then we have the tax, 883. The 921 is the amount that was withheld, earned income tax credit, 3,115. And then we have the amount to be refunded, 3,153. We will now add two dependents and see what happens to our tax worksheet through the software. We're going to go back to the data input. We're going to go into dependents. This may differ from software to software. We're using Lacert here, but we will have some type of ability to enter dependents into the software. Then we have, we're going to say the dependent's name is going to be Tom and last name Smith. We're going to give the date of birth it will be 5-5-1996. No date of death, obviously. We're going to have the social security number of uh, 777, mock social security number. We'll give the relationship of a son. We're going to say it's going to be a child living with the taxpayer when applicable and child tax credit when applicable. Let's now take a look at the forms and see what has happened with the one dependent. We're going to go to the forms up top. We're on page one within the dependents area. Of course, now we have Tom Smith. Here's the social security, the relationship son. Note that what we don't have as the benefit here is an exemption and we don't qualify this dependent for the child tax credit. However, still, still something to gain from having the dependent by having a credit for other dependents. So that's kind of what was given within the new tax law in order to get rid of the exemption or one of the trade-offs. The exemption is gone for the dependents, but oftentimes, even if they're not a qualified child, which it would be the biggest benefit because we would not still have the, the exemption, but have a, a greater credit related to it, we could then qualify for a credit for other dependents, which will be on page two. So if we then go to page two, and we scroll down, we're going to see we have the child tax credit for other dependents. And that's the 500. We click on the worksheet, then we can see the calculation for that 500. So we're going to close this back out. We won't go through that calculation. We're going to go back to the detail and enter another dependent. This being Jane Smith. If we say the date of birth is going to be 6-6-2018. And so what, if we have... Uh, a newborn within the tax year, born before the end of the year, then we can claim even though not living for uh, within the house for the whole year because uh, of those circumstances, of course. So as long as born before the end of the year, social security number, we're going to say is this daughter. We'll say seven months here, but we do have the date of birth here being in 2018. Child living with taxpayer uh, when applicable for the credit. We're going to go up top for the forms now and see what happens here. If we go back to page one, now then, of course, we have the other dependent, two dependents. We're going to say, here's the social security number, daughter. And now we have the child tax credit qualified. So we're qualified for the child tax credit. That's nice. We're going to then go to page two. Note that we don't have any changes in the income, of course. We don't have any changes in the adjusted gross income the standard deduction, we still have the same taxable income as we did before entering either dependents. What we've added now are going to be the credits. So now we have a child tax credit, credit for other dependents. That's going to be the 883. Notice it's going to be broken out now between the credits up top and the credits that are going to be down below. And this has to do with the fact that some credits are going to be refundable type credits, meaning even if we go below the tax that we, we are have paid in, the tax liability will still get a credit. So in, in other words, we're actually making money from paying taxes. It's not really paying taxes. We're actually getting a refund over and above the tax bill that we had. 
So when we think about the amount up top here, we've got the 883 matching the amount of tax that we owe, meaning we're not paying any tax. So then we're going to say, okay, now we have some credits that we're actually going to still get the credit, still get a refund, even though we're not paying any tax. And those include in part the earned income credit. So here's the earned income credit. And then part of the payments for the child tax credit are going to fall into that category, that being the 1,400 here. So the total credits and payments that we have is it can be a little bit confusing. The, the lower income or people that are, are qualified, taxpayers qualified for these credits are actually <laughs> have a bit more confusing of a return to fill out because of the complications here between uh, what, what's refundable and what's not refundable. So in any case, the payments we have are 883. We have the earned income 3115. And then we've got the refundable 1400. So these are, th this is the credits that we have. If we add then to that, the payment that we made of 921, 921, we get the 6,319. We're gonna subtract that then from the taxes. The tax bill was only 883 minus 883. And that gives us our refund uh, 5,436. And if we see it calculated in the other format, we're gonna say, okay, here's taxable income. Here's the amount of child tax credit that we're going to apply to taxable income. The amount that you would, that's going to bring taxable income down to zero. That's what, in essence, this calculation will be. So now we have a tax that is zero, but we paid 921, which means we're going to get a refund of that for sure. On top of that, we're going to get a refund related to the earned income tax credit. So, and that calculation is here. We looked at it last time. We won't check it out again. And then we've got the, the other portion on form 8821. If we take a look at 8821, we're going to see that this is the child tax credit calculation maximum of the 2,500. We're limited to the 2,500 because it's, it's going to be the child tax and other uh, dependents that we had of the 2,500. And then we're maxing out the amount that's going to be refundable to the 1,400 and you go through this form step by step and see exactly what that calculation will look like. We won't do that here. We're just going to go through in broad strokes. So we'll say there's the 1,400 and that'll give us our, uh, the, the, the total payments we have. And then of course the amount to be refunded being equivalent to the payments and credits, given the fact that we, we now are at a stage of not owing any taxes. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.